And it goes a little yeah. something like to my day in the life as a rover pet sitter if you're watching this it's because you were wondering what i do on my day-to-day -day basis i don't blame you it's a very interesting business that i run and yes i did say i run a business because it's exactly that i have to deal with clients on a daily basis i have to make sure that my services that i'm providing for them are five star every single time i went like this but five star every single time I meant like you know what I mean uh, it is about 7:45 in the morning and oh, and that's just me sleeping in um, I've been waking up this whole entire week maybe around 7 in the morning 6 in the morning um, I was able to sleep in today because I am at a dog's house and he did not wake me up I have been house sitting Pepper. Pepper is a 14 year old dog who is deaf and takes a lot of medications. A house sitting is when you stay over the night while your clients are out of town and you make sure that the house is not only safe from anything but also the pets are taken care of while they are out of town. I just wanted to give you a little rundown of what I have to do today regarding Rover. I have an 11, 11 a.m. drop-in visit. I also have a 11.30-ish um, dog walk. I have another 2 p.m. dog drop-in visit. And then I have a 5 p.m. dog walk. And then I'll end the day back here at Pepper's house. All right, so I'm about to get out of bed. Oh, I also have to take care of some guinea pigs, which they are easy to care for. The app doesn't have an option to babysit any other animals besides dogs and cats. Yeah, let me show you what I have to do with the guinea pigs. Pepper. Pepper. He's deaf, so he doesn't even care. Hi. <laughs> they are ready to eat. So for the guinea pigs, I have been feeding them this uh, measured one fourth cup of their pellets. I'm just putting it in their food today. Yeah. Dealing with the hard hearing dog is a little difficult. So if I want to call Pepper, I have to really like Pepper. Good morning. Good morning, Pepper. You slept good? You look like you slept good. <laughs> he was like, no, I didn't, I'm saying. And then I just grab him by the collar to kind of just tell him that it's time to go downstairs. And he's a good boy and he listens. So Pepper free eats, which means that he doesn't have an eating schedule. He kind of just eats whenever he wants. This whole week he's been eating at night so every morning when I wake up and I let him outside I have to fill up his bowl again as well as his water um, okay well I'm gonna go ahead and brush my teeth wash my face and change out of my pajamas so that I can really get this day started I changed and I got ready but I didn't put my face on yet because I really would like to do a little workout before I you know Put makeup on and then it's all sweaty and yeah you already know so before i do that i'm gonna go ahead and make myself some breakfast i'm gonna be eating some oatmeal with toast and coffee let me go ahead and make all of that mm, there is nothing like the first sip of coffee in the morning let's try this oatmeal can't really fuck up oatmeal mm, it's hot Mmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> so you always have to make sure your dog's eyes are clean, especially if they're really, really old. They can you know, get a lot of gunk in their eyes, and um, it just, if it builds up, it's, it gets really bad. So you always want to make sure that you're staying on top of their um, hygiene, because if imagine if you come back after a long 
week of vacation and you see that your dog is disgusting and dirty and your dog sitter pretty much just took advantage of your nice, beautiful home and didn't take care of your dog, like, that would be annoying. And again, I am a five-star dog sitter, so I do the most for my clients and my dogs. I'm about to get this workout in. And I have to feed the guinea pigs um, their veggies and fruits. So I am not gonna record my workout, <laughs> mainly because I don't know how to really work out. I'm only gonna do this workout for like 30 minutes and that's it. I'm letting Pepper just hang out and chill with me outside of the gym. That way he doesn't feel lonely. All right, I had a fantastic workout. My abs are feeling tight, my booty's feeling plumped. But now it's time to feed the guinea pigs. So I have been kind of worried that I'm either overfeeding them or not feeding them enough. Here what their plates look like. I kind of just put two pieces of celery, um, two blueberries, and then blackberries. I believe that's what it's called. Hello. That is peanut butter. And over there is brownie. I've kind of been trying to feed them with my hand because um, oh, I really wanted to get them to trust me. They still have not let me pet them. Oh, see how they're fighting over there. Here you go. So I just finished getting semi ready. I have about, let's see. 15 minutes until I have to start getting ready to go to my first dog visit at 11 a.m. Pepper is just such an old dog and he really is so sweet and so easy to care for. Most of my dogs are. I've never really had a difficult dog working for Rover. If you are interested in being a Rover dog sitter, I highly recommend it. Especially if you're like a student or something or you work from home. Why I love being a Rover dog sitter is because it's literally so easy and I make my own schedule. I work when I want, whenever I am working and staying over at a dog's house. I'm still able to work on my own things like creating my podcast as well as other YouTube content. A lot of people do this as a side hustle. I definitely do this full time and I'm able to uh, provide for myself. That's because I really put in a lot of work and I say yes to everybody. It might be my people pleasing, but also I think it's just because I have such a great reviews on Rover that I get booked so easily. So me and Pepper are just going to chill. We're probably going to go outside, make sure he goes potty before I leave because I won't be back for another three hours. Wait, let me think. All right, so I'll, I'll be gone for four hours. The owner of Pepper said that he needs to be taken out every six hours. So I'll be back just in time to let him out again. I definitely tell my clients before they book me, you know, I have regular dog visits that I need to go to and I will probably be gone for this long of time. And I've never had a client that's like not okay with that. They're always like, okay, yeah, that's fine as long as you're back in this amount of hours to let him out. I will see you guys when I am at my 11 o'clock dog visit. Lucy, you're so cute. That's my 11 o'clock. I, um, this is an easy job. They do trust me enough to give me a key to the house. I also have like a ring of keys and I just keep them in my car. That way I'm not carrying like all of my clients' keys because God forbid I freaking lose one. Don't forget to have fun while doing your jobs and making sure that you are developing a relationship with your dogs. Um, these dogs don't really like to play except for Emmett. He loves to play fetch as well as get his butt scratched along with all of them. If you give one of them attention, they all need attention. Um, while they're outside doing their business, I come inside and make sure to clean up after them. They have a bad habit of dropping their water and their food bowl. So I just make sure that everything is cleaned up so that when the owner comes home from a long day of work she doesn't have to worry about any of their mess 
Okay, so I'm back in my car. I'm gonna be on my way to my next dog walk. Welcome back to this house at 2 p.m. I let my client know that, hey, somebody spilled the water jug. I mopped it up just so they know that I'm, I'm using their supplies and let them know that what everything that happened. I let them know every minor thing, like whether it be the dog's poop looked a little soft or the dog has a little cut here and there. They're usually aware of this, but just in case they're not and they know that I'm, I've, I noticed, I tell them. I've had clients before tell me that their other dog sitters that they had to let go was withholding information like they accidentally broke the blinds to open that was one of the excuse one of the reasons so even if it's just something so small so minor detail that you might not think you should tell your client I recommend you just to tell them anyways just so they know that you know while you're there you are noticing minor things so that's my huge tip on that and also if you could tell I'm wearing some comfortable dad shoes I didn't have any shoes for this job when I started and my feet were always hurting so I recommend you go get some shoes, break them in and uh, start wearing those to every dog walk. Visit number two. We just went to the park and played fetch and got their butt scratched. Yes, yes he did, yes he did. Oh, and more playtime. <laughs> so the reason why I didn't film the walk was it was because it wasn't really a walk. The um, clients that I'm visiting dogs for um, live in an RV park. So it was pretty much just taking them to the dog park that's in the RV community. But they did warn me that one of the dogs was a rescue. So whenever he does see an unfamiliar dog, he does uh, get very aggressive and he does uh, charge to the dog. I noticed that there was a huge Rottweiler and to avoid any conflict, I was like completely focused on what I was doing with the dogs and did not vlog that experience. So I pretty much spent about 15 to 20 minutes in the dog park make sure both of them went poop and pee and then we played fetch for a while make sure they got some exercise in and then we walked back to their RV and then in there I you know gave them a tree gave them some cuddles gave them some attention when you're opening up the rover app you start the walk and also you count how many times they pooped they peed and I send pictures I send a bunch of pictures just Sending so many pictures to your clients is, I think, a really good idea. Because I also wrote a note. It was a good lengthy note. Just got home to my favorite dog in the whole wide world. Excuse the mess that we have in our apartment right now. I am not home, so that's why it's a mess. Because a man is just living here. <laughs> no offense, babe. I love you. She's so happy that I come home to her and to tell her that she's gorgeous. Look at her face. No good effort. Tell me this isn't the cutest dog you've ever seen in the whole world. Mm. I love her and her breath stinks. Mm. Thank you. Doggies! Hi! Hey girl, hi Lucy. You guys don't want to go outside? Come on. Come on. Let's go party for Hi. Bella, come on. my clients ask me to do while I stay at their house is check their mailbox every day and it gives me an opportunity to let Mr. Pepper go for a little walk just down the street and back. So yeah, I'm just going to show you guys. Okay, so I just got to my last dog appointment of the day. I am with Ruby and Keone. Oh! Look at these two. They are so adorable. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. My hands are going to be completely full with these two dogs. So I'm not going to be able to vlog that experience. So he found me through Rover and he started, he asked me to do a weekly dog walk um, Monday through Friday while he was at work. And so I believe that came out to 
like $80 a week and he just added this new puppy so I offered him to just do it for an extra 10 bucks so it went from 80 to $90 a week this is these are my favorite type of uh, clients when I have them repeatedly throughout the week Rover when I first started it was just a bunch of like once in a while but these clients that I have that book me on an everyday basis really do pay the bills and so I try my best to do the best service as soon as possible and you know she's so cute she's so cute yes cute Nick yes yes uh, but yeah this is my last dog walk so we're gonna go out for a walk and I will close out the video with you guys when I get back to my house or the dog's house I have had a very long day and I don't care because personally I love to work I love to be busy and I love to you know obviously make money so thank you again for watching my day in life as a rover dog sitter I hope this was more informative you know more hands-on and I encourage you if you are thinking about this to just do it it's not as hard as you think it is um, it is time-consuming and it's i don't want to say that it's easy but it's honestly to me better than working for a nine to five job working under somebody i get to make my own schedules i get to pretty much have my free time um i do dedicate a period of time to my dogs but throughout the day if you really were added up i have more time to myself than i do with the dogs and i honestly for a 30 minute visit i charge about twenty dollars so i mean you do the math you work what seven the minimum wage right now is 725 for one hour of your life nah that being said if you guys like this video go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you guys want to see more of these videos i would love to do them anyways thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video oh wait i forgot to tell you something you're amazing. Bye-bye.